Okay, welcome back. This is our module on blogging. And before I get into this, I have got to give a big, monster, huge warning about blogging. This can be something that could severely distract you from doing revenue generating activities and revenue producing activities. Now, blogging is a long-term strategy. I'm not telling you not to do it. I'm just saying don't get so focused on blogging that you're not doing the things that generate revenue and actually build a team. Now, this is not something that's going to have you generating a ton of leads overnight. Now, I have I now at this point I generate leads almost every single day from my website at mattmorris.com, but I have been blogging consistently, giving away free content and free video training for well over 5 years. 5 plus years to get to the point where it generates leads every day. Now, the first year, two years, even 3 years was not generating a lot of leads. And I'll give you another just a, a warning and something that's very true. You'll want to write this down and use this in your network marketing career and it's this. People typically want to enroll others the way in which they were enrolled. And so if you're enrolling people through your blog, then they typically are going to want to set up their own blog. And the learning curve behind it and the time that it takes is just so long, it's really hard to get any kind of massive duplication. And so I have enrolled a bunch of people through my blog that has worked for me, but it is, I'll tell you, my biggest teams are not the teams that I've enrolled the person from my blog. In fact, um, I would say this, um, it does create a very quality lead. Someone, you know, I've got a very high closing rate of someone who becomes a lead on my, on my blog, but the duplication rate is not nearly as high. Why? Because people want to enroll others the way in which they were enrolled. And so, uh, you know, they typically want to do the internet marketing thing. And so my biggest teams come from people that I've known for years, people that I've met at events, people that, you know, I've met at Starbucks, things like that. Um, if I were, to lose everything and have to start from scratch, I would not spend any time at all setting up a blog. I would go out on the streets. I'd start meeting people. I'd go to networking groups. I'd go to seminars. I'd meet people. I'd enroll them. I'd get into their warm market. I'd tap root. I'd build leaders. I'd do all the things. So um, blogging should be something that if you do this, spend maybe 5% of your time at most with the blogging. Again, it's a long-term strategy. It is great to build some authority for yourself, uh, the attraction marketing piece, you know, it's good. Sometimes people will feel like, well, if you have a website and a blog, um, you might be a stronger leader, just the perception of that. And so just want to give that warning initially. Now, in setting up your blog, there are a lot of different ways that you can set up a blog. You can go to wordpress.com. My site, mattmorris.com, is hosted on WordPress. Um, you can go to wordpress.com. You can read about it. You could Google just blog setup or set up a blog, and you can find some resources anywhere from a free blog to thousands and thousands of dollars that you can spend on your blog. Now, I'm going to give you some resources that I, I've used some of these resources, and they've been a huge help to me in different projects that I've done. Number one is Elance, E-L-A-N-C-E. -E. Uh, the other is Odesk.com. So Elance.com and Odesk.com. Um, a couple others, 99designs.com. It's 99designs.com. There's one other that you can look at. Um, I haven't done the, I haven't used them for a website, but I have used them for some graphics and transcription and some other things. It's fiverr.com, F-I-V-E-R-R.com. Now, what these are, it's basically communities where providers or designers will post uh, you know, themselves up that they're available for hire. And what you can do is you can go on there and you can post a job and then other people can essentially bid on the job that you posted. You can say, you know, I want to spend this amount of money and you'll have anywhere from a few people to maybe a few dozen people bidding on your project and you can get some incredible deals. The key on this, be very specific about what you want. I mean, I, I went on 
anything, anytime I use one of these sites, I mean, if I'm doing design work, I'm going to draw out, um, here's where I want the picture. Here's where I want the tabs. This is where I want the opt-in box. I mean, just draw it all out, leave nothing to chance. Now, um, I'm not going to give you a ton of ideas, but model some other sites. You know, you could go to mattmorris.com. You can go to other people, uh, maybe in your company if they have their own blog or site set up, and just see what they're doing. See what other successful people are doing. I am big on the concept of modeling. I believe why invent the average when you can copy genius. In fact, that's one of the chapters of my book, The Unemployed Millionaire. And so a couple key things, though. You definitely need a picture or pictures of yourself that creates creates a bond. You know, if people see your picture, then obviously there's some trust there, some credibility. You want to have an opt-in box so they can subscribe to your newsletter. Um, you can go to companies like getresponse.com or aweber.com and uh, you can use that to collect the leads that come in. Again, if you're using Elance or Odesk or something like that, a lot of times the uh, designer or the programmer, they can work with you on how to integrate and how to set all that up. I am not technically inclined whatsoever. I have no idea how to do any of that technically. I've always just found other people to do it for me and hired them. Uh, the other thing is if, you're, if your goal is to generate prospects for your network marketing business, rather than just have your name and email address or just your email address to subscribe to your newsletter so people can get your blog posts, you can set up a special page that's specific for generating a lead for your network marketing company. So, you know, on my website, I have a video. It requires them to put in their name, their phone number, where they're from. I even make them you know, tell me about themselves. Um, if they want me to call them back, they're going to have to say something about themselves. And so make sure you have those components on the website. And you know, I, I could complicate the art of blogging. And listen, there is no shortage of training online on how to blog. You can confuse yourself thoroughly, just like I did when I first started getting into it. You know, I bought books on blogging. I got courses. I bought courses. I hired someone to coach me on it. And I, there is so many things that they will tell you to do. You end up getting overwhelmed. And so I'm just going to give you a handful of things. Now, we generate close to 1,000 people a day on my website just from SEO traffic, um, get a ton of visitors. You know, it, it, we've definitely I've figured it out. And here's what I figured out. There's only a few keys that you need to worry about. Number one, this is probably the most important thing. If you want traffic from Google, um, you're going to have to be consistent. Consistency is key. And so don't, it just don't even listen to this training unless you are committed and you will stay dedicated to blogging at least two to three times per week. Don't even bother setting up a blog. And I'm talking about two to three times per week consistently for several years, year after year. It's got to be something you're committed to doing forever. And that's what I've committed to doing. I've just, I record two to three videos a week. I blog at least three times a week and I'm committed for life. I'm just doing three blogs per week. I do Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I typically don't do more than that. I never do less than that, at least three times a week. And I've just do it forever. And see, here's my attitude about network marketing. I am a network marketer for life. I'm going to be doing this the next 20, 30 years. It is a marathon. It's not a sprint for me. So if you're looking at this and you're brand new and you're thinking, oh, I need to generate thousands of leads now, don't even bother setting up a blog. You got to look at this. If you're brand new to network marketing, maybe you've been in it for years. If you're a professional, you got to have the mindset that you're still going to be with your company. You're still going to be in network marketing 10, 20 years from now. And so if it takes you a few years, in order to get to the point where you're generating consistent leads every single day, if it takes you five years, hey, no problem. And so it's kind of like me. It took me almost six years to get full-time in network marketing. It took me six years to figure it out. Am I glad I stuck it out for the six years? Absolutely. And so here's kind of what I went through. When I first you know, started getting serious about blogging, I 
was going to write every single day and I was going to write blog posts and I would optimize the heck out of them. I'd use keyword tools. I mean, I was wanting to do it perfect and I'd do it every day because I listened to, you know, some bloggers, I, you know, got some home study course and they said, spend 15 minutes a day and, uh, you know, five days a week or seven days a week and you're going to have this flood of traffic. And I believed it. And so um, I could not do a blog in 15 minutes. I couldn't write a blog post in 15 minutes. It'd take me an hour or two because I don't want to make sure it was optimized and all that. And so I burned myself out. I went from doing four or five a week to almost none a week. And here's what I finally decided to do. For me, I, I, you know, I am a writer, but it takes me a while to write. What's easy for me is to record a quick video. I've got so much knowledge on network marketing in my head that I can pop open even my iPhone. Sometimes it, I just pull out my iPhone, I record a quick video, and that's something I can easily do. A two to three minute video, I can do that a couple, two, three times a week. Um, I went to video because video is easier for me. Some people don't like to be on video. They feel uncomfortable with it. Uh, I'll tell you this as a side note, I did feel uncomfortable with it. Just like anything, if you haven't done it a whole lot, you're probably going to feel uncomfortable. Uh, the more you do it, the more you get out of your comfort zone and the more comfortable you become. So even if you... I, I am bit, I love video. We do video and then I have someone essentially transcribe or kind of write a little bit of an outline based on what I said in the video. That way we have the video and we have the text um, for SEO purposes. And the key is you've got to get to the point where you can do two to three a week consistently without burning out, burning yourself out and without spending a ton of time. Now, here's another key is blog about what you're passionate about. You know, I'm passionate about personal development and I'm passionate about network marketing. That's something that I can talk about, I can train on all the time. And most of my videos, if you see my website, most of them are specific to network marketing. You know, I've chosen to be really niched into network marketing. And it, I think it is very important to be niched. A lot of people say, well, I don't want to pigeon my, pigeonhole myself into one particular area. And that violates most marketing principles. You actually want to be niched because if you're positioning yourself as a jack of all trades, master of none, and you know, you write about gardening one day and personal development one day and travel the next day and then health and nutrition the next day, you know, people look for websites that they can go deep in one particular subject, in one particular niche. And so um, stick with one, you know, personal development and network marketing, they really go hand in hand, they go together. And so it's okay to kind of combine those two, but um, don't try to write about a whole bunch of different things. Pick one specific topic. It, maybe it's sales, sales training, or maybe it's just nutrition. Maybe it's weight loss. Maybe it's getting fit, you know, having six pack abs, building muscle, you know, uh, stay niched. And what happens is people will join your newsletter and you want to get to the point where when someone gets an email from you about a new blog post, they can't wait to read it because it's about a subject that they're passionate about. And if they see that you're passionate about, it's kind of like your kindred spirits. You know, they're going to like you and they're going to want to be in your community on your blog. And so um, that that is a really good piece of advice for you. Here's another thing that I used to really stress myself out about is are people searching for it? And I'll tell you, I went through a period of time where I would only blog about uh, things that I knew people were searching on. And here's, a, here's a, another big, big key. Don't target individual words. Target phrases. So if, let's say you're blogging on sales. Don't, if you try and, uh, you know, be relevant for the word sales, you're going to be on the 50th page of Google. I mean, there's just so much competition with millions and millions of websites out there. Um, go for phrases. So, um, you know, instead of trying to optimize a blog post for sales, you could put sales tips for network marketers, sales tips for network marketers. Now, that's a longer keyword phrase. A lot less people are searching on it, but there's going to be a lot less competition and you're much more likely to be ranked on the first 
first or second page of Google. And so um, what happened with me is every time I did a blog post, I would figure out what keyword or keyword phrase I wanted to optimize. I'd use the keyword. There's a Google AdWords keyword planner. Um, it's free. Uh, as long as you have an AdSense account, you can just type in Google, put AdWords keyword planner. Google AdWords Keyword Planner. And what that allows you to do is you can type in a keyword phrase and you can see how many people are searching for that phrase. And I did that on every post. And I know I used to probably uh, optimize my posts a little bit better, but what happened is I would stress myself out because I'd spend so much time trying to optimize every post. It was just painful for me and it took time away from my revenue producing activities in my network marketing business. And so I'll tell you my strategy now. I don't, when I do a blog post, I don't look to see if people are searching for it. I just, whatever comes to mind, if I feel like it can add value to the people on my list, I'm going to blog about it. I'm going to record a video on it. And that is the key. The main key is to be relevant and to add value to your subscribers, to the people that you're wanting to target. If you can add value to them, then you're going to get traffic. And what I have come to is what I would much rather do on my website now is I'd rather have content that's so good People share it with their friends, and that's how I get traffic. I'd rather get traffic that way than try to optimize it for what people are searching on in Google. Uh, for me, that's just easy. That's what works. Now, if you are just dead set and you want to know, well, uh, how can I optimize the post to get traffic from Google or the other search engines, uh, here's a couple that uh, I've used that I know work. SEO Presser, you can go SEO Presser, P R E S S O R.com. SEO Presser.com. There's another one, I think it comes uh, directly into uh, with uh, the WordPress platform. It's the all in one SEO pack. It may be a plugin that you've got to download. Uh, I have never downloaded a, a plugin myself. I've always had um, someone from Elance or a programmer do that for me. Uh, there's another one that we uh, have moved to it's WordPress SEO by Yoast. I don't know that it works any better than the other, but it's super simple. And what the tools allow you to do is it will tell you, you know, you need to have a picture. You need to have an alt tag to the picture. You need to have whatever your keyword phrase, you need to have that in your headline, your H1 tag. It helps if you have it in the H2 tag. It helps if you use the keyword phrase in the first sentence uh, of the blog post, in the last sentence of the blog post. Um, if there's, you know, underline, if there's highlighting, and what those plugins do is they tell you exactly how to optimize your post. And I'm telling you, they do work. I have definitely seen on the posts that we've, when we, when I was really focusing on getting traffic from Google, they definitely work. Again, it got stressed out for me. I get a lot more traffic now than I did in the past because I'm putting up content that people really like and they're sharing with others. Now, here's another key for you. Don't try to find what people are searching for and then write about it. Find out what you want to write about and then see if people are searching for it. And this is a good strategy that some, one of my coaches told me is if you're struggling on what to write about, go pull out a personal development book or pull out a sales book, pull out a network marketing book, pull out a health and fitness book, and just find something in the book that is interesting to you that you can write about. Now, obviously, do not copy word for word, but find something and make it your own. You know, if it's a tip on closing, you know, read a book on closing, figure out a strategy there, and then create a video on it or write a blog post about it. And again, don't get hung up with needing to write about things that a ton of people are searching for. You know, if you've get, uh, if there are 100,000 people a month searching for a particular phrase, chances are that's a very competitive phrase. A lot of the traffic that we're getting traffic to on my website, there might only be a few hundred or maybe a thousand people a month searching for that phrase, but because it's not competitive, I rank on the first page of Google and we end up getting a lot of traffic from it. And so, 
Um, here's what I want for you. I want you to blog. I think it's a great thing to do. If you're, if you are willing to be consistent with it, if you're willing to not have it take away from revenue producing activities, it is great to build your brand. It is a long term strategy. It definitely gives you a lot of authority. And if you read um, my video report, the authority report, there is definitely a lot of power in becoming an authority. If you haven't um, read my authority report, you definitely want to find that. Um, I talk about the ultimate authority. One thing that really catapulted um, a lot of my results is when I became an author. When I became an author, what's interesting is the way people look at you is just different. People immediately um, think of you as a leader. You have immediate credibility. You have that immediate authority, that immediate expert status when you become an author. And so... Um, check out our authority report. In fact, I don't know if when you're watching this, we may not have any slots available, but you can always go to mattmorris.com and uh, there's uh, a become an author link on there. If our project is open, you could definitely apply to become an author in a book with myself. I have helped well over 100 people become authors, many of them best-selling authors, and it's provided a ton of value for a lot of people. So hope you've gotten a ton of value out of this uh, blogging module. Looking forward to seeing your blog. If you create one, make sure you reach out to me and uh, send me a link to your website. I'd love to see what you've done. Thanks for tuning in. Go make life an adventure.